I am not the minister of the hour, amen. But we do bless God for the, the one that he has chosen for this time. She is my mother, amen, in the natural. Amen. She birthed me some 41 years ago, and I know her to be a true woman of God. Amen. She is a holy woman of God. She loves the Lord with her whole heart. She has lived a life that the fruit, amen, speak to her faith. And so when I consider all the things that God can do for you, beyond blessing you with this precious salvation, there's nothing more important than having an example, having someone to nurture you, to pray for you, to push you through, to have a vision for you even when you don't have a vision for yourself, a vision that aligns with God's will for your life even when you don't understand it or know it. And I believe that that's what God gave me, and for that I am very blessed. Amen. I am blessed because everybody does not have that testimony, don't have someone to look to to know that God is able to keep you if you want to be kept. Amen. She raised six of us. In some of the most dire circumstances. But she trusted God to provide. And so when you consider her story, when you consider all that God has brought her through, you know that it's not just a vessel that speaks the word of God as it's printed, but has seen that word come to life because it's a letter that kills, but it is the spirit that gives life. Amen. And so she is empowered by that life-giving spirit, the Holy Ghost. Amen. She loves God, loves the word of God, and she is ready and yet able to preach the word of God to you today. So I would that you will stand all over the auditorium and that you will prepare your hearts out there online wherever you may be, to receive the messenger for this hour, Mother Patricia Howard. Clap your hands for her as she comes to your front. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm here today. Um, I want you to know that God is able. Yes. Hallelujah. I want you to know I don't care what you're going through or what you've been through or what voices tell you. God is able in your situation. And we're living in the last days. Glory to God. And in these last days, the enemy decided to try to put stumbling blocks in our way. But we serve a living God who is the creature. He's the creator of everything that there is and there is to come. So we have no need to fear as long as we know him. In the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his suffering. Amen. Amen. When we look in our Bibles, you can be seated. First thing that comes in Genesis chapter 1 is in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. And the earth was without form and void. And when you see void, it means that something is missing. Something is immature. Something is not making the grade. Glory to God. It also said that darkness was upon the face of the earth. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. So we talk about God a lot. We say Jesus. But we're talking about. 
the one that is omnipotent, and in his omnipotence, he, he, he's all, you know, he's omnipotent. He's got all this power that's in him. He's all powerful. And if anybody's all powerful, there is none power left out of him that anybody else can take and do anything with. So if anybody do things and they, you think they're powerful, it's not that they're powerful, it is that God allowed it to be so because he has a purpose. But God is all powerful. Glory to God. He knows and he's able to do anything but fail. If you have your Bible, turn to Matthew, to Psalms 33 and 6. Psalms 33 and 6. Because we not just going to talk about God, we need to get to know him for ourselves. Because in this time of life, there are so many gods. Gods. And a lot of times, people are different from whom they think God is. If you look in 33 and 6, it says, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. Glory to God. He's all power. He didn't have to call anybody to help him make the heavens and the earth. He didn't need no help. God don't need our help. We need him. He really don't need us. We need him. Glory to God. So he, by himself, did all this stuff. Glory to God. I ride through Jacksonville sometimes, and Jacksonville is a pretty big place. If you start riding, it gets to be bigger and bigger, it seems to me. And as big as it is, I understand it's just like a speck in the eyes of God for how big the universe is and how great he is. Another thing, Isaiah 45 and not verse 9 through 10, God is omniscient. God is omniscient. 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 I'm sorry. God is omniscient. The omniscient is he all-knowing. He knows when we're going to get up, when we're going to sit down, when we're going to mess up, when we're going to do it right. He already knows. He knows the beginning. He knows the end from the beginning. Amen? He knows what we're going to do. Because he's what? All knowing. Isaiah 45, verse 7 says, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. God does not hide himself unless he choose to because of our iniquities. In other words, he opened himself up to his creation. He don't tell you, oh, oh, I didn't do that, you know. I didn't do that evil. He said, I create the good and the evil. I do that. He said, I do that. He takes responsibility. A lot of times we and ourselves, we don't want to take responsibility for what we do or who we are. We want to say, oh, I don't think I did that. No. In other words, we become liars and not the truth. But God is a God that does not lie. He cannot lie. Glory to God. And he tells the truth. That's what he wants us to do. He wants us to be what? Just like him. He wants us to always be truthful. Drop down, ye heavens, from above, and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open up, and let them bring forth salvation, and let righteousness spring up together. I, the Lord, have created it. Warn to him that strives with his maker. Let the potsherds strive with the potsherds of the earth. 
Shall the clay say to him that fashion it, what makest thou all thy work? He has no hands. Warn to him that saith unto his father, what begettest, begettest thou? Or to the woman, what hast thou brought forth? Glory to God. So he's saying that I made you who you are. And you can't turn around and tell me why you make me like this. He said, woe unto one. Woe unto you if you're not satisfied what God did do for you in your life. Because he sees the end from the beginning. And a lot of times when we're going through struggles, we're going through trials and temptations and tribulations and sufferings, the first thing we say, we don't say, thank you, God. We say, God, why you let this, allow this to happen to me? And then you go on to tell God how good you are. I, I, I give tithe of all I possess. You get about a third of it. <laughs> I give tithe of all I possess. And I'm, I'm faithful to the church. And you want, but I'm faithful. <laughs> and I love you, God. I pray all night long. And you know you was at that club drunk. You know what you were doing. But God knows. He knew when you knew when you're gonna take the drink. He knew when you're gonna mess up. He knew it all. But what I look at when I say God is able, I have to first look at it and say that God is love. I have to say that God is love. Because if God wasn't love, We'd all been gone and down there and there with the rocks, the hot rocks. But God is love. That's the first thing about God is he loves his creation. And he desires his creation to love him back. First commandment with promise, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy soul, thy mind, thy strength, and thy neighbor as thyself. God knows that love Covers a multitude of sin. And love puts you in his presence. Where hatred will put you out of his presence. Where backbiting and lying and stealing and all this stuff will take you out from the things that God had prepared for those who love him. God gave me this little song about how we are the family of God. We are family. We're God's family in the earth. He has a family in heaven, and he has a family in what? In earth. And he is love, so the family in heaven is love. We're in earth, and the family in the earth should be love. But because we have an enemy, an adversary, he came to bring division against us so that we could fall from grace and walk either as other Gentiles. Which God said, no, 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 don't do. Amen? So that's our Father, our Heavenly Father, and that's his love. But we're talking about what God can do, what God can do. And I think about my life and just tell you a few things about what has happened to me as pretty much a married but single mom, but you know. And the, um, I had these children that I had to raise, amen. And I have a son, he is a sweet son, I love him, Jonathan. He's a friend, but he loved to climb and jump. Climb and jump some more and all this stuff. And frequently he'd come with scratches and cuts. And I'd say, oh, son, where you get that from? How'd that happen? Oh, I would jump in the ditch. Or oh, I jumped through the window. Or oh, I fell up and lost the tree. You know? And 
to anybody that may seem, you know, but to me, that was I meant a hospital visit and money and all that stuff. That's what it meant to me to get you back six back. One day I took Pastor Maddie and Sister Maddie um, to a, a, a dinner, you know, it's, uh, and I left him home and I, I felt so bad because he said he ran behind me, Mom, let me go with you, let me go with you, let me go with you. And I said, no, son, um, you know, you can't go. Well, about an hour later, her, Sharon came up there. Hey, Pat, um, Patrick was up there on the community center, and he fell off the wall on his head, and rescue got him, taking him to the hospital. So, ne you know, nevertheless, you know, our, our dinner was interrupted. I went to the hospital, and he was there, and he was kind of like sleeping. Then he, he, he hollered for a minute. Then he started back. And so the last time he did that, I said, Patrick, I said, tell God, I said, say, God, he said, God, give me a healing. Then God, he healed So after that, there was no more. He was straight. Amen. He's been straight since. Why? Why is he straight? Was it because of mama? No, it was because God, God will. He has all power. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. I tell this all the time. I tell you, I know y'all y'all tired of me, but four weeks or four years old under a uh, uh, probably about a two-ton mail truck, probably from, the, from here to probably the end of the street was the amount of time where that I was under the truck. Me and my brother Richard, we were fighting over the mail. We were on the corner where, the, you know how you have rain and the mud, and I slid, you know, trying to, and slid, and slid up under the truck, and the man, he was still trying to sort out his mail, and when he finished, he just drove on off. But me under the truck. And when I came to myself, my dad had me taking me in the house, and I had round the it was a colonel, so people were standing all around the curb, you know, like everybody, nobody expected me to make it. My mama told me you can't have children, I got six. They told me I couldn't walk, I walk, I run, I jump, even now. So God what? Is able. God knew I was going to go under the truck, so he prepared angelic presences for me so that the truck wouldn't take me out because he had something for me to do. He had told me to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth, and I couldn't do it four years under the truck. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Brother Calvin, 2010, I went into the bathroom. I came back, and I said, Brother Calvin, so-and-so, so-and-so. And he said, uh, 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 uh. I said, stop, stop, stop talking like that. I mean, I said, talk plain. You're scaring me. And he went out. He went out, and I called on Jesus. As I called on Jesus, he came back. I got rescued to get him, take him, and he's alive today. Hallelujah. Because God is what? Able. Asha. He said, we ask. It shall be given. Hallelujah. I don't care what your children are going through, what your parents are going through, what you're going through. You ask God. And walk before him. Hallelujah. Walk before him in holiness and righteousness. Hallelujah. And he will do it because he's able. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all. We can ask for thank according to the power. That worketh in us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. When Prophet James was here, we got up and sung that song. And the lady was saying, Who opened doors that I can't see? Jesus will. 
It takes something to believe and have faith in your heart and your in your father, your heart, your heavenly father. She believed that. Amen. We sung that. And it brought a belief in us that God can open doors that we can't see. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That God can cancel out our debt that we didn't think he could. He would send money that we didn't know anything about, didn't even ask for. Hallelujah. Because our Father is able. Hallelujah. And so he's trying to build our faith because the word of God says without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that cometh to him must first believe that he is. And he is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. You got to turn it around, saints. You got to be by Jesus in our life. He has to sit on the altar of our heart. Be first. Hallelujah. And foremost in our life. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We don't have to do any tricks. We don't have to do any gimmicks. All we got to do is talk to our Father. Hallelujah. And if you talk to him, he'll talk back to you. My mother-in-law had died. And I was um, in Gateway. And I said, well, I need, I need a, um, I need a, um, is it, yeah, um, the, the Lord spoke to me and said, do you, you know, um, do you need a new dress or something? It was saying, he was saying like that. He was asking me, did I need a new dress? Money for a new dress. I said, no, I just need a pair of shoes. Karen came and gave me the money for the pair of shoes. I mean, I didn't expect her to come up those and put the money in my head. I didn't expect her to be there. And I said, dog, I gotta have me dressed in a pair of shoes. But we gotta have faith and we have to say yes. And you know, me as being growing up, we were without so much. So we did a lot of time without. And then I didn't want to put the uh, burden on anybody. Glory to God. But I'm learning to say yes, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because God got it all. God got it all. It may not seem like it to you, but he has it all. And all you got to do is ask him. Glory to God. Do what he tell you to do. Glory, Jesus. He'll bring you to pass. Because he loves his people. God is love. God is love. And if you don't love, you ain't God. God needs us to love one another with a pure heart, severantly. He wants us to be severous about it. Have a burning desire on the inside. Hallelujah. To help our brothers, to help our sister, to cover one another. He don't want us out there talking about one another. He wants us to cover each other. He wants to love on each other. Hallelujah. He that loveth not is not of God. Thank you, Lord. He that does a lot of bike biting, that's not God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We got to grow up. Ah, uh, yeah, into him in all things. Yeah, we kind of, you know, we kind of shifty. We kind of immature. But God wants us to grow up into him in all things so that we can be like Jesus. We had that song, I want to be like Jesus. All I ask is to be like him. And all we got to do is ask him. All we got to do is stay before him. All we got to do is pray. All we got to do is read his word. Read his word. Hallelujah. 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 
that he will see us through our trials and our temptations and our tribulations. Worked at Reebok High School for a number of years, and every principal I had, I had a problem with them getting me what I needed. And then this man came to, you know, they sent him there to kind of um, make sure the people are doing what they're supposed to do. If he don't like them, whatever, he just can get rid of them. So he was getting rid of people, and I, although I worked there, they didn't pay me. The health department paid me, and I had to go to a meeting. We go to meetings on Fridays because I have to be there. Went, came back. He got me in the front of the office, and I hear anybody tell you, you just, you just, just, you just get something, you just get out of here, you know. So I went to his door. I didn't say anything to him then, but I went to his door later on, and I leaned on the door on the outside. And I said, Lord, sh tell me how to pray for this man. And the Lord said, all things are yours. And before I left Reebok, that man had gave me everything I asked for. <clears throat> everything. And guess what? They had somebody taking his stuff out, helping them out the door. They had somebody helping them out the door. Why? Because God is able. Hallelujah. And he will work on our behalf. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I've seen people. I was near death. I was in the hospital. So I started laying hands on people. I had a lady, an older lady, and they said that she had cancer. She was getting ready to die. I laid my hands on that lady and prayed for her in earnest. Came back from work. They had sent that lady home. Why? Because God is able. They say, don't tell me God won't give you gifts of the Spirit, that you can lay your hands on the sick. And the sick will recover if you have faith to believe it. Our God is able to do anything but fail. We sing the songs, but we got to believe it in our heart. Shut up, boo. Shut up, boo. Because God loves his own. Amen. Amen. And we know God is omnipresent. And we say he's everywhere at the same time. He's wherever you are and wherever you're going. God is there. God also, according to 1 Corinthians, I mean, sorry, Colossians chapter 1, verse 17, it says, and he is before all things. God is before all things. I had a hard time like for that when I was young. I was wondering... Well, how, how can there be a God if he don't have a mommy and a daddy? I had a hard time. It took me a long time to you know, kind of figure that out. Because we had a mommy and a daddy. How can we have a God and don't have, he don't have a mommy and a daddy? But God figured it out. God blessed me. That before you, I was. Because he is eternal. Amen. And by him all things consist. God is infinite. He's self-existing. He don't have an origin. He's always been here. And he just decided to make us to have somebody to love on. Amen. He decided to make us to have us to love on. So and that's why he expected that we love the Lord thy God with all your what? And 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 your neighbor and your enemies. You may have trouble with that, but it took me a while, but I don't have trouble with it anymore. Yeah. I can love my enemies. I can. And want the best for them. I mean, in spirit and in truth. Because that's what God wants us to be. He wants us to be love agents. Amen. God is immutable. He don't change. Anytime you see God, he's going to always be the same. In the Malachi 3, 6, he says, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. In other words, if I, didn't, if I change, you'd be messed up. But because I am who I am, I take my love to cover a multitude of sins. Hallelujah. So I'm going to keep you on, but you really deserve to be gone. Glory to God. 
God is self-sufficient, according to John 5, 26. For as the Father has life in himself, so has he given to the Son to have life in himself. The Word of God says we are the sons of God. I know I'm a woman, though, but you are the sons of God, and everyone a member in particular. Amen? Amen. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, word without end. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I'm just going to read it. Glory to God. I just want to let you know that God loves you. I remember my son was going through some stuff years ago. And um, uh, in my carnal mind, I think he's just going from pillar to post. <laughs> you know, that was in my carnal mind. And then it just came to me, he's a man of faith. He's a man of faith. And that's what he is. He is a man of faith. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. And if you stay around him, he'll show you how to be a man or woman of faith. Hallelujah. Because faith pleases God. Love pleases God. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We're back in the hands of our own pastor. Pastor Stephen. What is it? Gabriel Smith. You've got to praise for him. Amen. Somebody give God a hand clap of praise. If you believe the word of the Lord. How many believe the report of the Lord that God is able? He will do just what he said he would do. Had he spoken it, he shall yet perform it. He will bring it to pass. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. The word of God says we are overcome. We are overcome by the word of our testimony right but it means nothing unless you have the blood of the lamb and so when you go through things in the midst of faith in the lord your god it is he that brings it to pass he makes you an overcomer he makes you a majestic overcomer and he's called us to be strong ambassadors you are victorious crusaders. You are true prevailers. You are triumphant warriors. You are mighty conquerors through God in whom you trust. And you are Jasper Stone. You are that stone that's been hewn. Come out of the bloody rock and, and now the cleanness of God shines through you. It is through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so we appreciate God for those great testimonies. We appreciate God for his word. Because when you're run over by a mail truck, you're not even supposed to live as a little girl. When you're told that you will never have kids, but you have six. Hallelujah. When, when, when you always seem like you're not going to have enough, God provides. He is the Lord Saboeth. He is the Lord of abundant supply. He can never run out. So I don't know what's going on in your situation, but know this, God will provide. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge the Lord your God. Acknowledge Jesus. Acknowledge his son. And he'll direct your path. Hallelujah. This is her testimony. It's because of that testimony that I have a testimony. Glory be to God. You don't know whose faith you're going to feed into. You don't know whose faith has been struggling, who's been low. But then when you speak the word of the Lord with clarity, with purpose, with conviction, knowing what God has done for you. Now, the word of God says God is not a respecter of persons. But I know he's a respecter of character. Amen. God is yet able to do exactly what he said he would do. 
Amen. So we appreciate the Lord. Clap your hands for the messenger of the hour, Mother Patricia Howard. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. We appreciate God for you all today. Amen. We bless him for his word. Bless him for his spirit that's in this place. That he's empowering us. Even during these times, he's empowering us. Even though it seems like a setback, it's a setup for those who will trust him. If you only trust and obey, there is no other way. God will do it for you. Amen. Amen. So we love God today. Amen. We thank everyone for watching online. We thank you. Now, if you'd like to give in this anointing, if you'd like to sow into good ground, this is good ground. Amen. This is holy ground. Amen. And God is moving in this place. And we cannot wait until the Lord allows us the ability to contact each other in the way we love to. But for now, we will use these digital purposes. But if you like to give, you've been blessed. Amen. Those who are members of this house, sheep of this fold, we, we, we do tithe. We do give unto the Lord the first fruit of our increase. We know that there's a blessing in doing so. And giving God what even belongs to him is just turning back to say, thank you, Lord. I appreciate you. And then your free will offerings as well as God moves you to do so. Amen. Those out there who are watching, if you've been blessed by this message, we ask you give by those three different ways. You can give online uh, through our website, Hepsibah EPC. That's h-epc.org. Click the donate button. It'll take you to a secure link so you can give. You can also give through cash app, uh, cash sign Hepsibah EPC, or through Givelify as well. You can search us out in the Jacksonville, Florida area. Amen. Or you can Send it the old-fashioned way. Amen. Checks, they do spend, and money does spend, even at this time, to P.O. Box 9790, Jacksonville, Florida, 32208. Amen. But we bless God for you being here with us today. We ask that if God has blessed you, you show back up here next week at this time at 1130, and we'll be looking to fellowship with you as we move forward. God bless you, God keep you, God's face shine upon you and give you peace. Hence, now, henceforth and forever, amen, amen. Somebody put your hands together for Jesus. Amen, here in the house, here in the house, amen, we ask you to prepare your hearts to give. Our ushers are coming as well. We're still practicing our social distancing, being safe and certainly being wise about how we handle ourselves at this time. Amen. But we know God is able. We thank God for the relaxing of restrictions that we're able to come, but we're also using wisdom. Though government relaxes restrictions, we know that we have to be wise in our own, in our own walk. And so we have different means that we're utilizing. Make sure you keep your mask. Make sure you keep your gloves. Whatever, whatever it is you need to protect yourself and protect your children. Don't stop those things, those immunity boosters, those things that the prophet has given us so that we can build up our immune systems because it's hitting our communities much harder than, than others. And so uh, there is a political and economic uh, reason why the government has to open back up. Amen. People have to go to work.